The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, let's see what's doing in Summerfield. It's Saturday afternoon, and the great Gildersleeve, accompanied by his nephew Leroy, is just locking the door of the water department for the weekend. Well, Leroy, we're free as birds for a day and a half. Yeah. What do we do over the weekend, Doc? There's not much to do in Summerfield. Nothing much happens except the usual vital statistics. Hey, do you suppose that's a vital statistic standing in front of the Marriage License Bureau? It could be. A young Marine waiting for somebody. He looks a little nervous. Yeah, he's going to get married all right. Hey, keeps looking up and down the hall. Uh, maybe I can help him. Hello, young man. Uh, hello, sir. I'm a city official, and I noticed you pacing up and down in front of the Marriage License Bureau. Hey, can I be of any help? I could use help from somebody. Oh? Well, I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, the water commissioner. I'm Private First Class Tommy Clark. Yeah, I'm glad to know you, Tommy. Uh, this is my nephew, Leroy. Uh, hello. Hi. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, gosh. My girl was to meet me here to get a marriage license, but she hasn't shown up. Maybe she got cold feet. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> well? Oh, she'll be here, but we got a lot to do. We've just got this weekend to be together. I'm shipping out. Oh? Well, let's see what we can do about this. Have you called her home to see if she's left there? Oh, she left there two days ago. She did? Well, she lives back east. Oh. She just got here this morning. Came out to marry me. Fine. Congratulations. Ah, thank you, sir. She had some shopping to do. You know how it is with a girl when she's getting married. Oh, yes. Know it well. Sure, he's been almost married several times, but he always lucked out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little Leroy. <laughs> what time is it, Mr. Uh, Miss, uh... Uh, Gildersleeve? Uh, uh, let's see. It's uh, 12.35. Oh, here comes Susan. Uh, her name is Susan? Susan. What kept you so long? I'm sorry, Tommy, but I simply had to find a hat. I couldn't make up my mind between a cute little white decay and the darlingest blue linen. Oh, you couldn't? So I got both of them. Hmm. Gosh. Yeah, you'll have to get used to that, dummy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Susan, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do? I'm Susan Taylor. How do you do, Miss Taylor? Yeah, Taylor for now. Uh... Oh. <laughs> oh, brother. This is my nephew, Leroy, Susan. Uh... Miss Taylor. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Mr. Gildersleeve is the water commissioner. How do you do? Uh, Susan, you've already met him. Yes, we've been through that. <laughs> well, I'm not responsible for anything I do today. We're getting married, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, I know. I'm so excited. I didn't sleep a wink on the train. I'll bet I look a fright. No, indeed. You look wonderful. Bright as a dollar. Thank you. You're going to make a beautiful bride. Isn't she, Tommy? Oh, yes, sir. She's pretty cute, I guess. Oh, Tommy. Oh, come on, Unc. Let's go. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you came out alone, Susan? Yes. Tommy was getting a furlough, and we planned a June wedding, and then this happened so suddenly. Yeah, I told her to hop a train. And here I am, 
There wasn't even time for Mother and Dad to come. Well, they're missing a big event. Yeah, let's go, huh? (laughs) We have to go, too. We have to pick up the license and take a cab to the judges. The judges? Yeah, I want Judge Horace Hooker to marry us. He's been pretty swell to us fellas out of camp. Well, wonderful. The judge is a fine old goat. Yeah, I mean, uh, fine old personal friend of mine. He is? Sure. Say, why take a cab? Why don't I drive you out there? Oh, we don't want to inconvenience you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no. You must have a lot of things to do. I haven't a thing to do. Come on, let's get the license. Oh, for corn's sake. There goes the weekend. I like your home, Judge Hooker. Thank you, Susan. Now that we're all comfortable, I'll take our things in order. First, do you have the license? Yeah, we have it, Judge. We picked it up less than an hour ago. Gail Day, I'm addressing my questions to Tommy and Susan. Yeah. Well, I just happened to be with them when they got it. Now, let me see. Tommy, do you have the ring? Yes, sir. It's being engraved, but it won't be ready until 5 o'clock. Don't worry, Judge. I'm picking it up. Oh. Now, do you children have your health certificate? Yes, we do. Yes, sir. How about you, Gail Day? <laughs> <laughs> Judge. Well, you seem to have such a big part in this. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve has been so nice to us, Judge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose there's nothing more we can do for the present. You pick up the ring at five, have a big dinner, and we'll have a twilight ceremony. How's that? Swell, Judge. Great. I don't think I could eat a bite. Well, looks like we have a little time to kill. If you kids have nothing better to do, I'll be glad to show you the sights of Summerfield. <laughs> It'd take you out to the reservoir. Gilday, chances are they'd like to be alone. They only have this weekend to be together. Oh, yes. That's why we want a quiet, simple ceremony. No frills. We just want to get married, don't we, Susan? More than anything. Oh, aren't they cute, Judge? Yes. Susan and Tommy are a splendid young couple. Thank you, sir. Would that I could turn back the clock 20 years to my youth. Judge, 20 years ago, you were already collecting Social Security. (laughs) Well, (laughs) Dad. Well, if there's nothing more to do, I'll drop you two off downtown. Oh, I almost forgot a very important thing. Since your parents aren't here, we'll have to have a witness. A witness? Tommy, do you have anybody in mind? I haven't had time to think about that. Good. It just happens that I... Susan, is there anybody you'd like especially? (laughs) Yes, there is. I think both of us would like Mr. Gildersleeve to be here. Me? Well, thank you. (laughs) Well, that's settled. Okay. We'll be back this evening. Goodbye, Judge. Bye-bye. Don't be nervous. You don't worry about them, Judge. Do you have an aspirin for me? George, I've got a lot to do before that wedding. Bertie! Back to the guilty! Yes, I'm home. I found that with you. I'm in a big hurry, Bertie. Yes, sir? Can you press my blue serge? I'm going to be in a wedding. A wedding? Didn't you make up your mind in a hurry? <laughs> I was just asked, Bertie. Yes, sir. Miss Gillsleeve. Yes? Bertie never gets curious, but who asked you? Susan Taylor. The little bride to be. Well, don't that beat all. What time are you marrying her? Bertie, I'm not marrying her. She's marrying a Marine. Oh, then how do you fit in there? I'm going to be the witness. Didn't Leroy tell you about the young couple we met at the courthouse? No, sir. I ain't seen Leroy. Well, Judge Hooker's performing the ceremony this evening. Oh, that's nice. Hi. Hello, Leroy. Yeah, hello, my boy. Why are you home, Uncle? What do we do? Well, I'm going to be busy, Leroy. I'm going down to Floyd's Barbershop and get a haircut, shave, massage, and maybe a manicure. What for? I'm going to attend Tommy and Susan's wedding. Yeah? I'm going to be the witness. You finally horned in on it, didn't you? (laughs) Leroy, I was asked by the bride herself. I'm the only one who's going to be there. That's quite an honor, Mr. Gilsey. You bet, and I'm not going to take it lightly. I'll bet you're not. I'm going to pick up the ring at 5 o'clock, and we're having a twilight ceremony. Yes, sir. It'll be just the bride, the groom, Judge Hooker, and me. That'll be cozy. It's going to be quiet and simple. 
And that's the way they want it, and I'm going to see to it that it stays that way. I get... See? Yeah? Why don't I get a photographer to come to the wedding? A photographer? Certainly. It's a memorable occasion. Tommy and Susan should have a picture of it. Hey, right, George, I'll phone the newspaper and have the photographer sent over. Now he's calling the newspaper. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, I thought you was going to keep it quiet and simple. Yeah, well, when the picture appears in the paper, that could be the caption. Quiet, simple wedding. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, Floyd. Hi, Commish. Hop right up in the chair. Good. Yeah, I want the works. Shave, haircut, massage. Yeah? Floyd, you ought to have a manicurist. A manicurist for an old war horse like you? I'll call a blacksmith. <laughs> yes, yes. I often thought of having Lovey come down and do the manicuring. Oh, your wife a manicurist, Floyd? That's the way I met her. I walked in a shop to get my nails done. She grabbed my hand and has been hanging on ever since. <laughs> so look, I'm in a hurry. Sure. Besides, why should I tell you my troubles? Uh, just a light trim. Yeah, I'm going to stand up at a wedding tonight. Oh, yeah? Anybody I know? A young Marine from the camp here. Marrying a fine little girl from back east. How about that? Judge Hooker's performing the ceremony, and I'm the only witness. It's going to be a nice, quiet little wedding. No music or nothing? No, Floyd. No fuss, no frills. Gee, it's a shame they ain't having music. Even Lovey and I had music. Kind of softens the blow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the way they want it. Quiet and simple. Of course, I'm having a photographer out there to take pictures. Bride wants them for keepsakes, huh? Well, it wasn't her idea. It's mine. Oh. It, somebody has to think of these things. Uh-huh. Say, a little music wouldn't be bad. If Floyd, you've played that old organ in the judge's parlor, haven't you? Yeah, I wrestled with it once. I lost. <laughs> it wouldn't be bad for the wedding march if you played softly. Gosh. I never played for a wedding. I don't know who else to ask. Do you know Lohengrin? Don't get him. Let me play. <laughs> That's the wedding march, Floyd. Oh, sure. All right, be there at 6.30. We'll have a nice, quiet wedding. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. One of the tricks to serving salads at their best is to serve them on salad plates or in salad bowls that are well chilled. Another important trick to serving delicious salads is to use a salad dressing you can depend on to give your salad just the right flavor. That's why so many good cooks all over America use Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a flavor that millions of folks call just exactly right. It's a wonderful, peppy flavor that's just sharp enough. And it's a different flavor. One you won't find in any other salad dressing. That's because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe. A recipe that combines the very best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. Miracle Whip has a marvelous texture, too. It's creamy, thick, and satiny because this dressing is blended thoroughly with special beaters. No wonder Miracle Whip has become the most popular salad dressing ever created, actually outselling the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Get a jar of Miracle Whip tomorrow. Right now, grocers everywhere are featuring a wide variety of salad fixins and the best liked of all dressings, the famous Kraft salad dressings. For new salad ideas, see your grocer's display. Don't miss the Kraft Salad Carnival. Well, since the great Gildersleeve was asked to be a witness at the simple wedding ceremony of a Marine and a maid, his enthusiasm has called the affair to mushroom to where it includes a newspaper photographer and a barber to play the wedding march. Right, George, I know they stress the simple, quick ceremony without falderal. Since I'm going to be in it, I really should have a gift for them. I wonder if Peavy has anything. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. 
Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Phoebe, I'm looking for a wedding present. Hmm, somebody getting married? <laughs> well, why do you think I'm looking for a wedding present? Well, because somebody's getting married. <laughs> That's right, Peavy. Somebody's getting married. Yeah, why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh. <laughs> what would you suggest for the young bride of a Marine who's shipping overseas? A ticket on the same boat? <laughs> no, Peavy. That wouldn't be bad, but I understand it's against regulation. Yeah, chances are. Hey, what do you think they'd like, Peavy? Well, let's see. Now, when Mrs. Peavy and I were married, we were presented with two new umbrellas. Umbrellas? Of course. We were on our way to Niagara Falls. <laughs> That's no help. And then we got a buggy robe. Peavy, they don't use buggies anymore. Well, after marriage, sometimes the buggy comes in pretty handy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got something there. Come to think of it, I just won't buy anything from you. How's that? Yeah, I'll go down to the jewelry store and start off the kids' silver service. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, the parents usually do that. Well, they're not here. I wondered why you were taking charge of things. Somebody has to. I'm the witness. I even took them over to Judge Hooker's. He's going to perform the ceremony. My, my. The judge spends so much time in court, I hope he doesn't lose his head and give him 30 days. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It's going to be a perfect wedding. I'm going to see to that. Yeah, I can't help feeling a little sorry for the kids. Their parents couldn't make it, you're saying? Well, on account of going overseas, they had to act quickly. Well, it's too bad they didn't have time to plan it the way they'd like. Yeah. But I called a photographer so they'd have pictures of the wedding. And Floyd will be there. You invited Floyd? Well, he can play the organ, Peavy. Well, I can't play the organ, but I'd make a fetching flower girl. <laughs> yes, yes. Say, Peavy, there's nobody here to give the bride away. You don't say you could come and be a parent by proxy. Well, that would be quite an honor, but uh, do you think it'd be all right with everybody concerned? Peavy, you just take my word for it. Be at the judges at 6.30. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. You know I've never given you a bum steer. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Leroy. Carnation in your buttonhole and everything. Well, this is quite an occasion. It isn't every day your old uncle gets to be a witness in a wedding. Always a witness, but never a groom, huh? <laughs> well... Maybe that's why you're enjoying it so much. It's like saying, lest you and him fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, my boy, you don't realize this is a solemn occasion. The heck I don't. Peavy was genuinely touched when I invited him to give the bride away. You invited him? You bet. And Floyd's going to play the wedding march. I thought the couple just wanted a quiet, simple ceremony. Well... Now you got a newspaper photographer, somebody to give the bride away, somebody to play the wedding march? Yeah, all right, Leroy. I'm going to invite only one more person. Yeah, who? You. Well, uh, me? You'd like to go to the wedding, wouldn't you? Well, look, I've been to a wedding. I had to go to Marge's. Yeah, you like this wedding when you hear about the job I have for you. Unc, if you say ring bearer, so help me, I'll disown you. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. How'd you like to go along to throw rice and old shoes? No kidding? No kidding. And tie tin cans to the car? You bet. And right just married on the car window? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, change your clothes while I run downstairs. Okay. I'll even wash behind my ears. <laughs> yes, sir. This is going to be quite a little wedding. Tommy and Susan will be surprised when they see what I've done. Yeah, I'd better see how Bertie's coming along with a dinner. I went to your wedding, although I was dead. Well, the wedding's on Bertie's mind, too. Say, why doesn't Bertie sing at the wedding? Oh, Bertie! Come along, Bertie. Yes, sir. Aren't we a little early, Unc? Well, I wanted to get here before the bride and groom. Hey, come along, my boy. I gotta get my stuff out of the back of the car. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I see the judge has scrubbed his front porch. Yes, sir. He has a new welcome mat. I hope he means it. Well, hello, Gildy. Hello, Judge. And Birdie. 
I'm surprised to see you. Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, I thought I'd ask Bertie to sing at the wedding. Well, Tommy and Susan expected a very unpretentious wedding, Gilda. But I'm sure they'll enjoy Bertie's voice as all of us do. Come in, Bertie. Thank you, sir. If you'll excuse me, I'll put these gladiolas in the parlor. They're very beautiful, Bertie. Yeah, Bertie cut those from the garden, Judge. Well, here comes Leroy. Hi, Judge. <laughs> Leroy, stop planking those cans. Gosh, you can't pick them up. I got my arms full of old shoes and rice. Gilda, what's the meaning of this? Well, I want to give the happy couple a good send-off. Gilda, you distinctly heard Tommy say that... Close the door, Horace, and save your breath. You have to perform the ceremony. Well, I'll hide the cans and stuff out back. All right, my boy. Gilda, you've taken a lot upon yourself. Now, Judge... Don't you realize I'm responsible for giving Tommy and Susan the kind of wedding they want? Now, who's that? Why don't you answer the door and find out? A little early for the bride and groom. Hi, Judge. Floyd, what are you doing here? Heck, I came to play the organ. There's going to be a wedding here. I'm well aware there's to be a wedding, but who asked you to play the organ? The commish. He's the matron D of this whole affair. <laughs> Hi, commish. Hello, Floyd. Gilda. Somebody has to accompany Bertie, Judge. But Floyd is scarcely able to accompany the Jolly Boys Quartet. It's a lot easier to play for Bertie than an old goat. <laughs> Lord. Besides, I closed my shop early and I've been practicing. That's undoubtedly Tommy and Susan. Peavy! Yeah, hello, John. Mrs. Peavy wanted me to bring over these flowers for the wedding. Well, thank you, Peavy. Now that you're here, I imagine you want to stay. Well, I've already been invited, thank you. What? Mr. Gildersleeve asked me to give the bride away. Oh, he did? And there's a newspaper photographer waiting out front when you're ready. Oh, balderdash. <laughs> Gildy, I don't mind saying I'm worried about how Tommy and Susan are going to take this. Judge, I was only trying to do something nice. See, that as it may, I think we should respect the young couple's wishes and go back to the simple ceremony. I wondered whether or not I should be here. Yeah, I should have known better than to come on the commission, say so. No, fellows. Uh-oh. Bride and groom just pulled up in front of the house. Mm -hmm. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, there isn't time for that, Floyd. Here, let's move this old Japanese screen in front of the organ. Gilda, don't disarrange the house. I just don't want him to see Floyd and Bertie, that's all. Uh-oh. Peavy, hide behind the drapes. Oh, fiddlestick. Well, I better let him in. Everybody be quiet now. Shh. Hi. Well, Tommy and Susan, come in. Thank you, sir. Hello, Judge. Hello, Susan, and is Tommy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Say, what are all the cars doing parked out front? A lot of cars out front? Judge, you haven't started a parking lot, have you? <laughs> Very amusing, Gilda. Well, we're all here. We certainly are. Shall we get started, Judge? What do... Who's that behind the drapes? Oh, my goodness. Well, Peavy, you may as well come out. We can see your toes sticking out from under the drapes. <laughs> Gilda, would you like to make the introductions? Well, Tommy and Susan, this is a very good friend of mine, Mr. Peavy. How do you do? Hello. May I please to meet you? It occurred to me that since your parents aren't here, you wouldn't mind if he gave the bride away, Susan. Oh, I hadn't expected anything like this. Oh, well, we can skip that part. Oh, no, no. Somebody should give me away. Well. It's very nice of Mr. Peavy to offer to do it. <laughs> Judge, you really fixed up your parlor. Flowers and everything. Well. well the flowers are beautiful. Uh, uh, Susan. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Would you object to a little music for the occasion? Oh, I'd love it. And uh, maybe a soloist? Somebody to sing at my wedding? Oh, gosh. Bill Floyd, Bertie, we're ready. Okay, Commissioner. Tommy, I must be dreaming. No, this is for real. Hold my hand. Sure. I love you truly, truly. With its sorrow, life 
with its tears fades into dreams. Oh, it's when I feel you are near, for I love you. This is wonderful, Judge. You have Mr. Gildersleeve to thank. Well, I was afraid I'd overdone it. You did say you wanted a simple wedding. Well, the reason I said that was... Well, a man going overseas doesn't have much time to make plans like this. And Susan didn't know anybody out here. But you've made it perfect, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've always wanted a wedding like this with music and flowers and, and friends. I'm glad you're happy. Oop, there it goes. Here, Susan, take Mr. Peavy's arm. Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Want to make your vegetable salad extra delicious? Add tiny flowerettes of chilled raw cauliflower to it for a very special flavor touch. And use a really good salad dressing. Use Miracle Whip, the salad dressing with the lively, teasing flavor. The flavor millions of folks call just right. Miracle Whip has a special peppy flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing anywhere. Try it. Enjoy delicious salads made with Miracle Whip. Yeah, this is Gildersleeve again, folks. We've just given the bride and groom a send-off, and we wish them luck. And we especially wish our Marine friend Tommy luck, as we do all the men in our armed forces. But just... Wishing them luck isn't enough. There's a real way that you and I can help them. Aside from our boys in Korea, there are thousands of wounded men in our military hospitals still fighting for a chance to live. We can give them that chance by cooperating with the National Blood Program. The average wounded man requires the equivalent of nine pints of blood, and that has to come from we civilians here at home. So call your local Red Cross chapter for an appointment to make your donation. If you do this, it will be your privilege to help save a life. Let's not sit back and let the other fellow do it. Let's all of us Americans roll up our sleeves. Good night, folks. The Great Delta Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Tommy Cook, Ann Whitfield, Arthur Q. Bryan, Joe Enos, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> What goes into your favorite sandwich? Well, maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on...